All right, well, everyone, welcome. I'm Kyle DiGiacobbe, uh, Director of Men's Golf with the Florida State Golf Association. Uh, we figured we'd catch up with some of our players during this quarantine isolation period, see how they're making out through sitting at home, keeping their golf game sharp, and keep, keeping their time busy. So we're going to start uh, on the men's side, have our number one and number two from the 2019 player year points list. First, we have Devin Hopkins from Jacksonville. Devin, welcome. Thank you, Kyle. Thanks for having me. And then next we have uh, the guy, one of his good friends who he chased out, partner to Southeast Challenge, and second on the player year points list, Jordan Bachelor. Jordan, welcome. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for having us, Kyle. No problem. All right, so I'm going to start uh, just ask you guys a couple questions about what you've been doing. You could both uh, chime in at a time. But uh, before we get into that, let's have you guys each introduce yourselves, tell us something about yourselves. So Devin, go ahead, you first. Okay, uh, like Kyle said, Devin Hopkins, um, living in Jacksonville Beach, um, working in the health insurance realm. I was originally born in South Africa. Um, I'm just trying to make the most of this weird, weird time we're in. Um, you know, keeping the fitness sharp, practicing a little bit here and there, not nearly as much as Jordan, but, um, <laughs> you know, just trying to stay positive and get through this like I'm sure the rest of us are. Yep, sounds good. And Jordan, how about yourself? Give us a little background. Uh, yeah, my name's Jordan Bachelor. Um, I played golf at UNF, got finished playing last year. Um, now the assistant coach of the team. So that's been uh, an interesting change, but it's been fun. And yeah, everything going on, obviously it's been very weird for everyone who, uh, who plays competitive golf with a lot of stuff getting canceled and not really knowing when anything's going to be. But yeah, just trying to practice as much as I can and uh, stay competitive. So, perfect. Thanks. All right, so I'm gonna ask a couple of questions that apply to both of you guys first, and we'll break off and ask some individual questions. Uh, first thing is, you guys noticed you guys became friendly towards the end of last season. Had a, I know there was a little uh, some text messages and exchanges going back and forth as the player at your points list was coming down to the end and. Devin was eligible for the mid amateur stroke play while Jordan was still too young for it, and Devin ultimately edged you out. How, how did you guys first meet? What was your first encounter with one another in the Jacksonville area? Uh, Devin, you want to start? Yeah, I, I think it was honestly, um, I want to say the State Am in 2018 at concession. Um, yeah. And even then, it was still fairly brief. Um, I mean, I guess I kind of knew our, our mutual friend, Jordan's really good buddy, Davis Roche, a little better than I did Jordan at the time. Um, and then I, I – I can't tell you exactly, maybe Jordan remembers, but I think we just kind of just came back to Jacksonville and started started playing a couple weeks here and there. And next thing you know, we, we started playing just about every every day in a variety of different games in Jacksonville. Jordan might remember better than I will. Yeah, I think, um, I think at the time we were working with the same swing coach as well, uh, Justin Ragnetti. That's right, yep. And I was talking to him. He's like, hey, have you, like, met Devin yet? And I was like, I, I keep seeing him around, but I don't, I don't think we've ever actually been introduced. And somehow it came up and, yeah, we started playing a bunch together. And last summer was really fun for both of us because we got to travel a bunch together. And obviously we were both playing really good golf. Um, we both qualified for the USM last year and went to Pinehurst together. So that was an awesome experience. But, yeah, obviously it's been a, a pretty I – mean, I know I value our friendship pretty good. and. He's one of my Absolutely. favorite people to play golf with. So, yeah, it's, it's been pretty awesome. All right, so you, you touched on Pinehurst. Obviously, uh, both played in a few USJ championships. Uh, last year, both of you went to Pinehurst together. Jordan, you want to tell us a little bit about traveling up there, and then I'll bring Devin in? Uh, yeah, obviously, Pinehurst is one of the coolest golf spots in America, and uh, it was cool to play it set up in a USJ championship. Uh, honestly, it's really tough. But, uh, yeah, it's something I'll, I'll never forget being up there with Devin. And I had my dad caddying for me, which was awesome. So it was a really cool experience. Devin, how about yourself? How was your Pinehurst yeah, I mean, experience? It, it doesn't – I mean, not that I have anything to compare it to, but uh, it doesn't get any better than playing the USAM at Pinehurst. Um, you know, and to be able to do it with – not only a buddy like Jordan, but to have both of our dads there. I had my college roommate on the bag, um, and and we had uh, just a, an amazing time. Um, you know, obviously the golf was one thing, but just being able to share that sort of experience with with some friends and family um, for that amount of time was was pretty special. 
Awesome. Jordan, uh, back to qualifying for U.S. Amateur. I believe, if I mm -hmm. think correct, you got into in as a, the first alternate in pretty crazy playoff at Sawgrass Country Club. Is that correct? You want to share a little bit about that? Yeah. So obviously, um, I played. I shot even the first round, which I felt was a decent round of golf. I knew I had to shoot something low. The the second round, and I played really well. I shot 66 to get into the playoff. Um, me and Eugene Hong was the guy who I was in the playoff with, both part of the first hole. Uh, second hole was a reachable par five. I hit it on on two. He was about 30 yards short of the green, and he chipped in, and I whipped out my putt. So that was pretty heartbreaking way to, to lose, but um, – Everyone kept telling me, like, hey, you've got a good chance to get in. Uh, and I kept holding on to hope. And when I got that phone call, it was really, really exciting. So I'm glad, glad it worked out. I was pretty awesome. pumped when Jordan called me, too, because I was like, okay, sweet. Now, now we're both going. <laughs> it's pretty fantastic. Awesome, man. I got someone to travel with. Yeah. Well, and then uh, as we got later in the summer, you guys uh, came up with us for Team Florida, the Southeast Challenge. Just want to uh, have you talk about that experience. I know it was both your first time playing the team matches, but what did you guys take back from that? I mean, other than it being one of the worst car rides home for, I think, both Jordan and I, um, I'll speak for myself. I think, I think the experience was just awesome. I mean, you know, you hear it all the time from the big wigs in the golfing world. Um, you know, that you don't very often get to play team golf. Um, and being able to share it with not only a buddy of mine like Jordan, but but some of the guys that have been around the block um, for Florida State golf, you know, Steve and, and, and Jimmy and, and um, you know, all those guys. It's just, it's just pretty – it was pretty special. Yeah, for sure. Looks like we lost Jordan for a second. He's coming back in here. Jordan? We, uh, Devin just talked a little bit, but you just want to give us your take on the Southeast Challenge. Once, other than the car ride home uh, not being the best, what, what was the highlights of it? Uh, I think the highlight was just hanging around all those guys. Um, obviously, a bunch of really successful amateur players um, that have been in Florida for a while. You know, it was just really cool. Obviously, I was the youngest one there, and Devin was on the younger side. So it was really cool to hang around those guys and kind of hear some of the stories that they told and uh, whatever advice they, they had to give to us was really cool. So hopefully in a couple of years we can both be back on that team and have a different ending to it. So Yeah, we look forward to uh, look forward to a couple of years from now. It's up in Alabama. Hopefully hopefully see Florida get a victory again. There was a, there was a little practice round match I heard rumors about uh, for some U.S. <laughs> four ball runner runner ups. In, in case they tune in on Instagram or Twitter, what what happened in that practice round match on Saturday afternoon? It rained a lot of rain and it rained a lot of birdies for Team Jordan and Devin. Who uh, who was Team Jordan and Devin playing? Uh, we we're playing uh, two guys that you may not have heard of them. I think uh, Chip Brook and a Mark Dahl, I believe. Um, pretty formidable team, but. Um, yeah, it was fun. We had a we had a good little match, and I think it got the juice flowing for uh, for the real deal, which is why we were all up there. Yeah, I'm taking down Mark Dole and Chip Rook. Obviously, Mark's been a two time Player of the Year. Chip's won our Mid Amateur Championship, and the the duo has been to a Paris semifinals and a finals of the U.S. Four Ball, and keep knocking on the door. I think we so. were the last people on the golf course. It was uh, it was pouring rain, and we were on the 17th <laughs> hole, and you could barely see the other side of the green. But uh, neither one of the teams would would be willing to, to let it go. So we fought to the end. Yep. So uh, last thing, uh, you know, as, as it came down to that mid-amateur stroke play championship, uh, you both could give us some answers. But, uh, what, you know, Devin, obviously you knew going into the tournament what you had to do to get done, passed by Jordan, who was at home on the sidelines. But, uh, you know, what, what was it like? Uh, I know you guys practiced a little bit and played some golf together a week leading up to – week or two leading up to. What was, what was that like? heading into that final event, knowing exactly what you had to do to win player of the year. Yeah, I mean, I think I think that's one of the, the best parts about a guy like Jordan and why we enjoy kind of practicing and playing so much is is uh, we truly do root for one another, um, even in circumstances where obviously when you're playing the same tournament, you both want to win. But um, if one of you is out of it or, um, you know, we were down at the match play earlier um, – and same thing, you know, we were both trying to win the whole thing. And then when I got knocked out, I was out there following Jordan, rooting him along. Um, 
you know, so he gave me nothing but positive thoughts and encouragement. And I kind of went down, um, not really thinking about player of the year, to be honest, just trying to put together three good rounds of golf. And um, really, my goal was to win the tournament because I knew that would lock up kind of kind of everything and check all the boxes. Um, so it was just nice to kind of do that and, and do it in, in style, as, as some like to say. Yeah, awesome. Yeah, and Jordan, just want to touch with you. Uh, I know, unfortunately, there were a couple – couple runner-up finishes in 2019. I know you obviously would like to come back, come out on top, but what can you take uh, from the playoff at the state amateur and then the runner-up finish the amateur match play? What can you take from those two events into the 2020 season where we're hopefully back playing golf this summer and fall? Yeah, I mean, obviously it was a really good summer. Um, obviously winning is the main goal, but at least knowing my game was in a good enough spot to give myself some opportunities to win, um, is also good to take away and I'm just kind of using this motivation to hopefully be able to take uh, better advantage of those opportunities and try and try and win some more so that's the the main goal for this summer hopefully gotcha yeah again it's all hopeful for everyone we hope to, <laughs> we hope to be running some events I'm sure you guys are hopeful to be playing Devin gotcha. uh, any any goals for you this summer to play competitive golf. <laughs> so, I mean, no, I mean, I had a lot of goals. I had a, I had a pretty busy year um, set up both from a work standpoint and from a golf standpoint. And, uh, you know, the golf kind of came to a screeching halt here in the middle of middle of March. Um, and I think it's the, the goal would be to just get back out there, man. I think every one of us um, is, is itching to, to get our, our tournament feels back and, um, you know, so I think the goals have changed a little bit. Um, had very high, lofty goals at the start of the season, and now I'm just kind of hoping we get to play some tournaments. Um, you know, but obviously I don't think the goals change. The goal is always to win every tournament you enter. Um, so whatever that may be, whether it's a, a local city tournament or an FSGA tournament or a USGA event. Um, you know, so just trying to stay sharp and stay focused. Um, that's, that's always the goal. Awesome. All right, we've got a couple uh, rapid-fire questions. I'm going to ask them, ask all the questions to both of you. We'll start with uh, Jordan first, and maybe we'll get Perfect. a couple of reactions from Devin on it, and then we'll, uh, <laughs> we'll go to Devin and see what his reactions are. Some, some golf-related, some not golf-related. So, All right, here we go, Love Jordan. Uh, what golf course is at the top of your bucket list? Uh, Pine Valley. Okay, good one. What, uh, what TV shows or movies are you binge-watching right now in quarantine? Uh, Michael Jordan documentary that came out. I've been watching that. Um, been watching a little bit of Ozark, which has been pretty good. Nice. Uh, Rewatching Blacklist with my girlfriend for probably the fourth time. Um, but yeah, anything to kill time right now. Gotcha. Oh, yeah, I mean, it sounds like you've got a lot of the golf course, but I guess there is some TV to watch too. <laughs> oh, yeah. All right. When you're at the golf course, what's the go-to snack? Uh, Snickers bar. Okay, classic. Mm -hmm. All right, what's your fit? Who's your favorite musician? Favorite musician? Oh man, I would. Jimi Hendrix is up there for sure. Okay, going back old school. Oh yeah. All right, when you're at the golf course, are you walking or riding? Walking all the time, even when there are carts. There you go. Any any yeah, push buddy. cart? Any any push cart in there? <laughs> I either push push card or I got a Sunday bag I'll carry. I'll kind of alternate a little bit. Yeah, that's how golf should be played. <laughs> All right. Name name something that you hate but everyone else loves. Oh, my God. Uh, Twizzlers? Is that, is that a real – That's fair. That a, <laughs> that's fair. Wow. Okay. <laughs> All right. What's your favorite club in the golf bag? Driver. Driver hit the big stick. Oh, yeah. yeah. The office or friends? Uh, uh, office. Okay. All right. We're assuming golf's your favorite sport. What's second? Football. Football. Yeah. Jags big, fan? Big, big, big draft night for the Jags. Hopefully I don't screw it up this time. They're taking, they're taking Blake Bortles 2.0? <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's hope not. <laughs> All right, and our final question is, what's your favorite emoji? Oh, 
favorite emoji? It's got to be the one with the sunglasses, I think. Okay. Smiley face with sunglasses. Oh, yeah. All right. All right, Devin, now you've, you've had some time to think about it. We're going to have the same questions for you, so start, <laughs> start at the top. Let's hear what's your, what's the What golf course is on the top of your bucket list right now? Uh, Augusta. Yeah, it's an easy one. What do you think? Since we'll, we'll divert for a little bit. What's that going to look like in the fall, in your opinion? I, you know, I, I forget where I saw it, but I saw some pictures of Augusta in the fall with some foliage in the background. I mean, I think the place is always going to look good. It's definitely going to be different, but um, – you know, I think this whole year is different, so it's kind of fitting that Augusta is going to look a little different when it happens. Hopefully, it yeah, happens. for sure. Uh, what are you uh, What are you watching right now in your spare time? What TV shows? Uh, the Last Dance, Michael Jordan, but you can't really binge it until it all comes out. Um, and really, just kind of any old golf stuff. I know the other night I watched the '99 Ryder Cup and um, kind of some of those old old tournaments that pop up are fun to watch. Kind of a sure. golf nerd. Really, couldn't tell. Yeah. <laughs> what a what's your go-to snack on a golf course? Uh, beef jerky. Okay, is that a little easier to wash down with a Coors Light? <laughs> yeah, can be. <laughs> All right, who's your favorite musician? Um, Duke Ellington. Wow, classic Little jazz. All right, and uh, on the course, I think you answered this by your reaction, but are you walking or riding? Walking. Yeah. Jones bag, baby. There you go. All right, something that you dislike or hate that everyone else loves. Um, fast food. Okay. Any any uh, chains in particular? No, just I don't no. I don't like I don't care for any of it. Okay. Except What's Jordan kind of turned me on to Chick Fil A, so that doesn't count. <laughs> I was say, I saw you guys in the saw you guys in the Chick Fil A drive through <laughs> getting some uh, pre match fuel at the Southeast Challenge. Yeah, no doubt. Yep. I, uh, one of my coworkers and roommates, Andrew Scalf, who Jordan knows, he, uh, yep. he goes to Chick-fil-A like six days a week. They're only open That's six days a week. Outrageous. <laughs> <laughs> That's insane. All right. And, uh, what's the favorite club in the bag? Um, putter for sure. Okay. The office or friends? Office. Okay. Uh, other than golf, what's your go-to sport? Tennis. Tennis, okay. And final question, what's your favorite emoji you're using? Um, either the sunglasses or the cowboy hat. Okay. It's All the right, closest well, thing to Jordan's floppy hat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He's out there he's yeah, out there getting some out there getting some sun protection in the shade. There you yeah, go. Try it's not important. to get burned. Yeah. Well, I mean when you're spending eight hours a day at a golf course. That's true. Living that quarantine life. <laughs> Where have you been practicing at, uh, Devin? Uh, just hitting some range balls. I mean, Jack's Golf and Country Club is open. I've spent a lot of time in Tampa. Um, a little putting green, a little chipping setup. So, um, you know, kind of pooling all the resources together. Nice. All right. Well, thank you guys for joining us. Well, like I said,